Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to assign properties to structural geometry in RAM Elements Connect Edition. In this video, we are going to be focusing on assigning local axis orientation, cardinal points and rigid end offsets, along with your member end fixity. Let's first discuss the orientation of the local axes of members in RAM Elements. Now, by default, RAM Elements orients each member's local axis as follows. The origin will be located at the J end of the member, which is the initial node of the member. The local one axis is a vector that's created between the J and K nodes. And then the local three axis is parallel to the global X, Z plane for horizontal members, parallel to the global Z axis for vertical members, and perpendicular to the plane formed by axis one in its projection over the plan X, Z for inclined members. Finally, your local two axis is defined by the right hand rule with the thumb and forefinger pointing in the direction of the local one axis. The direction of the local two and three axes may be modified from the default values by manually entering the values into the data panel or by using the local axis generation tools available in the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon. It's also important to note that the local axis of members must be clearly understood in order to interpret the analysis results for each member. Many pieces of data are entered with respect to the member's local axis system. For example, the section orientation, the releases, some loads on elements, either concentrated forces or distributed forces and moments can be applied according to the local coordinate system, and also some of the results um, are related to the local and principal axes of the members. Now, when you are ready to review and or modify the local coordinate system for individual members, which would be the direction of the local two and three axes, you're going to go to your data panel and select your members tab, followed by your local axis icon. Now what you're going to notice is that when both of these are selected, your active spreadsheet tools available in the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon are going to become available to assist you in modifying the orientation of these members. In addition to that, to assist you in viewing what the default condition of the members is, you can also, once you have sections assigned to your model, view the rendering of your structure. To do that, we're going to go to the View tab of the ribbon and we're going to select the rendering option. Again, this is most useful once the section properties have been assigned to the member and you can zoom in and out to view the orientation exactly as they would appear if the model was analyzed at this point. Now what we're going to take a look at for this particular model is we're going to notice that our top cord and bottom cord of our trusses both on the side and the front faces of our structure are constructed out of wide flange sections and if we were to take a look at those members now we're going to notice that the webs are parallel with the global y directions local global y axis direction meaning they're pointing up and down now we can modify that by changing their rotation so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect all currently selected members. I'm going to hold down the control, the shift key and select my top flange and my bottom cord. And then I'm going to go to my spreadsheet tools and then use my by description icon. So again, I'm still showing the rendering and I can see what's happening with these members. Now within the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon, now I'm going to find my tools and I'm going to, for this member, for these currently selected members, I'm going to say rotate 90 degrees. So we'll go ahead and do that and we can see that the, the local coordinate system is appearing on each particular member. It's rotated by 90 degrees and what we're going to do is let's go back to the view tab in the ribbon, turn on the rendering and now I can see that the web of these members is now horizontal instead of vertical. So you'd want to be able to adjust the rotation for each individual member. Now you can see by selecting that tool from the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon, it automatically changed the rotation to 90 degrees for all the currently selected members. And those tools are used for convenience in case you want to 
apply a quick rotation angle to all of them. You can also manually enter in your rotation angles directly into the data panel if you don't find a tool that works well for you. Now to turn off the rendering, we can go back here, select the rendering option there, and then we can you know, zoom back out if we want to and take a look at the whole model. In the next series of exercises, we're going to show you how to model rigid end zones through the use of the cardinal points property and also the rigid end offsets. Cardinal points are used to define the member hang points. They are typically used to model eccentric members or tapered members, which are aligned in relation to a center. All members are defaulted to placement point 5 in RAM elements, which is the shear center of the member, but they can be modified using this property. In addition to that, you can also assign rigid end offsets. These are used to define a rigid extension of the end of a member where the shear or bending deformation is not desired. Rigid end offsets may be applied manually or also through the use of the spreadsheet tools. Now to assign cardinal points, we're going to return to our sample model, go to our data panel and select the members tab followed by the cardinal point icon. Now, when both of these are active, you're going to notice that we have several different tools available in the active spreadsheet tools in the spreadsheet tab at the ribbon. The first tool is our cardinal points icon. These are used to define the member hang points. This tool is most commonly used to align members in a desired position. You can also use these tools to create rigid end offsets and also delete these offsets. What we're going to do is we're going to use the assigned cardinal point tool to basically align the top of our concrete beam members at the first floor level to be even with each other. Now all of these members at this first floor level have a different depth assigned to them. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to unselect all members, hold my shift key and select one of my beams and one of my girders. And then I'm going to use my by description icon to select all of them. Now again, let's go to our View tab in our ribbon and select the Rendering option. And if I zoom in, I can see basically that the center lines along the concrete beams are matching the center lines of the girder. But for this particular model, I want the top of the beams to match the top elevation of my girders. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Spreadsheet tab in our ribbon, and I'm going to select the Assign Cardinal Point icon. And basically, I need to select which of these points I want to be where we see that yellow line that forms the member. By default, it's always going to be put at placement point number five, which is the sheer center of the member. But for this exercise, I would rather it be at cardinal point number two. Now I can see a small graphic starting to appear once I do that. I can see position two has been filled in in the data panel. And let's go back to the view tab and go back to my rendering. And now we can see that the tops of the beam members are matching the top elevation of the girders. I can spin this model around and you can see that there is a difference in the depths of these particular members. Now also for this particular model, we're also going to assign rigid end offsets. So I'm going to go to my data panel and select the members tab followed by the rigid end offset icon. And again, when these two are selected, I can see some active spreadsheet tools, which are available to help me assign these rigid end offsets. Now, rigid end offsets are useful when modeling members that are not connected at their local axis, as in the case of eccentric columns, or any case where the shear and bending deformation is not desired along a specific length. Now for this particular model, we're going to assume that these concrete girders that are framing into these concrete columns, that the distance between the face of column and the center line of support has negligible deformation. So we're going to use rigid end offsets to get uh, some more accurate results of how the model behaves. To do this, I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to select all of my beam members and my girder members that intersect the columns. So let's go ahead and select those members. Then I'm going to go up to my active spreadsheet tools and I'm going to click on this create axial 
rigid end offset. Once I do that, this table is going to automatically be updated and it's going to use the section properties that were already assigned to the members to basically pull them back. And what we can do is we can actually see what that ends up looking like. So this is your rigid end offset. Basically, it's pulling back the end of this member to the face of support instead of the center line of support. Now the last property we're going to assign through this series of videos is basically your member end fixity or your hinges. Now hinges are used to define the member boundary conditions. By default, all frame members are rigidly connected or fixed to the nodes at each end. This condition is appropriate to model for a fully welded joint. For joints that cannot resist flexural moments, it is necessary to release the respective moments so that the model adequately represents the real structure. Member end fixity can be modified for each end of the member separately represented by the J and K end and each local axis of the member separately represented by the two and the three. RAM elements also allows tension or compression only members that may be applied through the hinge generation tools located in the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon. Now when all members framing into a joint are pinned, RAM elements assumes that the node is free to rotate in space, thus resulting occasionally in an instability area. Error. Diagram 1 shows an insta instable joint at the top left corner since all three members framing into this node are pinned. Diagram 2 shows a more stable joint configuration as far as the analysis for RAM elements is concerned since the vertical member is not pinned. Now when you're ready to assign hinges in your model, you're going to go to your Members tab in your Data Panel and then select the Hinges icon. And you're going to notice that several different active spreadsheet tools are available to assist you in this process. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to assign our brace members in this particular model as tension-only members. To do this, I first need to select the brace members. I'm going to select one brace member and then use the By Description icon to select the rest. Then I'm going to go back up to my spreadsheet tab in my ribbon and select the tension only icon available through the active spreadsheet tools. Now you're going to notice that when I do this the tension only axial rigidity option is going to be entered directly into the data panel for you. In addition to that if I zoomed in I can see that a symbol is associated with that particular area to let you know that that is now a tension only member. Let's go ahead and unselect those members and let's move on to assigning some member end fixity. As we mentioned previously, all members are modeled as fully fixed when the member is created. And if your model is not representing a fully fixed joint, then you will need to manually assign some hinges. For this particular model, we're going to select our brace members and we're going to select our bottom cord and our diagonal members. Again, I can select each one of these and since I use my description carefully, I can use my by description icon to select the rest. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tell the model that I want to hinge both ends. And this can easily be done by clicking on the hinge both ends icon. Now you can see that the J and the K end, so J is the starting end of the member, K is your ending end of the member, and then the three here and the two here represent the local axis of the member, the local two axis and the local three axis, and the M represents the moment. So we basically have released the moment about each end of the member, about each local axis direction. Now if I go ahead and zoom on into the members, I can see that the symbol has been added to show me that that is now a hinged member. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.